Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at one of the more talked about Kentucky Derby contenders in 2022, and why not? Taba has run twice. He's earned triple-digit buyer speed figures in both of those races. From a pure talent standpoint, he might be the most naturally talented horse in the race but it's the experience, or lack thereof, that could work against him. Still, let's watch his last race, the Santa Anita Derby. This is only his second lifetime start. His first race passed six furlongs. He was going a mile and an eighth against two very good horses, Messier and Forbidden Kingdom, and boy, he passed the test, albeit with a good trip. It was a good trip, but, um, you know, listen, he, he sat relatively close to a pretty solid pace here. That was a good horse that was in front of him there in Messier, and... He just comes and closes that horse down right at the end of the race there, Dan. Another fast uh, figure for this horse, as you mentioned, is two for two lifetime. Um, he probably is the most talented horse in this crop at this point. Not that there aren't some others that have an awful lot of talent, but there's, there's, there's no telling how good this horse turns out to be. He was expected to be a good horse from day one. You look at his pedigree by the super young stallion gunrunner. He sold for $1.7 million as a two-year-old in training. He won his first start for Bob Baffert in a six furlong maiden special weight. He did it on the lead going six. It was nice to see him sit in his second lifetime start, especially since he was stretching out three furlongs against talented horses, of course. Uh, Baffert will not have a horse in the Kentucky Derby this year, so he was transferred to Tim Yachtin. Let's just talk about this horse's experience because that's the uh, the elephant in the room. Uh, can he do it in only his third lifetime start, Mike? It is a huge ask. We've seen other inexperienced, talented horses try it. They couldn't. Heck, even Justify, who didn't run as a two-year-old and broke the curse of Apollo, had more experience than Taba. Yeah, I mean, it is the big question with him is, you know, whether this is just going to turn out to be too much too soon. Um, you know, from, histor from a historical standpoint, it's just not supposed to happen. He's not supposed to be able to win the Kentucky Derby in his third career start. Um, the times really are changing then. Um, these horses are not campaigned the way that they used to be. Um, we had the horse, as you mentioned, Justified did it without a two-year-old foundation. So that was one of the dominoes that fell. You know, pretty soon some horse is going to win the Kentucky Derby in their third lifetime start. Whether it's this horse or not, who knows? But it certainly could be. He's really good. Let's talk about his preparation for this race. It appears he's only going to breeze once going in. Is that a concern for a horse that doesn't have the experience? Do you think that uh, he'll have enough foundation to go a mile and a quarter in his third start? Everything's a concern with this horse right now, Dan. I mean, he, he, this is going to be his third career start. He debuted on March 5th. He has one uh, route race in his life heading into the Kentucky Derby. Um, you know, and he's, now they're only going to breeze him once, one more time leading into the race. I mean, it, all of these things are, are, are what you don't necessarily want to see, especially for a horse who's going to, you know, have a lot of tension surrounding him. and It's going to take a lot of money in the race. None of them are good. Um, and they probably, at least from the way I look at the race, they're going to lead me to, you know, be looking for somebody else to bet. That being said, I won't be surprised when he runs really well. This horse is very, very good. It really does come down to price with a horse like this. And you just have the feeling that because of all the buzz around him, because of the brilliance he has displayed in his two starts, that he's going to take a lot of money. What is an underlay for a horse like Taba? Because I guess there's a chance he could even be the favorite. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think there is a chance he could be the favorite. It'll be interesting to see how all the, the wagering shakes out. It feels like there are probably going to be three horses between he and Epicenter and probably Zandon at this point who are going to, you know, take an awful lot of money in there. And I guess one of those three will be the favorite. You know, I just feel like, you know, he just has to be first, second or third choice in the race. And, you know, any one of those prices, whatever that uh, the line, the, the number settles that it's probably too short for me. I'll be looking for somebody else. Um, but, uh, boy, he's the kind of horse that you really want to see what he does, um, uh, because based on his first two starts, he could be anything.
A quick aside from Taba, and this is going to pretty much relate to all of the Kentucky Derby contenders we'll be discussing over the next week, is pedigree. Do you think pedigree is a little bit overblown in a race like the Kentucky Derby? Many of these horses have already succeeded at a mile and an eighth. Uh, do you think there is the huge difference, a mile and an eighth, a mile and a quarter? For Taba, it might be so because he's so ex uh, inexperienced. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I would worry more about the inexperience than the distance. Um, I mean, I do think it's it's something that you have to consider. Uh, they're not all going to be at their best or even close to their best going a mile and a quarter for the first time. Some of them just aren't going to want to go the distance. You don't really know who those horses are, though, until they run it, Dan. And it's not just based on the pedigree that you see on paper. We looked at the Santa Anita Derby. There was a solid pace on, and while Taba was sitting off of it, he was also sitting close to it. There is the likelihood of a fast pace in the Kentucky Derby. Um, your thoughts on how he could handle that situation going a mile and a quarter. He likes to be close to the pace, and again, at a short price, you, you hate to handicap this way, but I guess there's always a chance yeah. he ends up in behind for the first time in his life, getting dirt in his face, and he may not like it. Yeah, in a big field, it's, it's going to be almost impossible for him to avoid that unless they're just on a dead send, um, which I guess is possible, too. Um, you know, I don't know, Dan. You know, when I look at his, this horse run, um, as far as his running style goes, I mean, he was, he was he's obviously plenty fast. Um, he won his debut at six furlongs. And when you go back and, and look at the replay of that race, he doesn't even look like a horse who wants to sprint. He's just naturally fast. So he was able to secure his position in that race. And then he was way too good for those horses. Um, he was very comfortable without the lead in the Santa Anita Derby when he won that race. I know he was close, but he, you know, he wasn't right up on a fast pace. He, he was able to sit off of it. He looked like he was moving very comfortably off the turn, and um, he still had plenty left at the tank at the finish. Brilliant, yes. Inexperienced, yes. Deserves consideration in the Kentucky Derby, absolutely. But make sure you get your price on Taba on the first Saturday in May.